I'm almost glad so little happens in this show episode to episode, because enduring this is like going on a steady diet of chalk. So, let's get into it. Before we do, please, subscribe to help build my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. Alright, so this travesty of an adaptation opens with Velma wondering where Norville is. He isn't answering any of his overseer's texts because he's probably off giving Gigi a healthy dose of newfound freedom. Velma can't look at any of her evidence so far because the ever inconsistent lethal guilt refuses to do the world a favor and kill Velma, so it just wards her off because reasons. So Velma asks her dad for a ride, but he refuses since he is being dragged away to a photo shoot with Sophie and the newborn leaving Velma alone. But not really, since she'll be with the marching band for a sleepover. At the school, the mayor announces that due to all the sexual harassment from many of the students, most of the police have resigned probably because they aren't related to Roman Polanski. Due to the lack of cops, a curfew will be implemented, resulting in multiple events, including the band's sleepover being cancelled. At Daphne's, her moms leave and she decides to make good on finding answers and rides off to the Crystal Mines without the guilt of Norville egging her to leave. She opens the entrance, gets scared by rats, and gets grabbed by someone. Back at the school, Freddy has gone full cringe and tries to win over Velma by giving her information that might help solve her mother's mystery. You see, we learn that the Jones mansion was once owned by Dr. Edna Perdue, a neurologist who died at the insane asylum. This sparks Velma to find Norville, but Freddy mentioned he's probably with his new girlfriend. Velma then kicks the door open like an untrusting parent and finds Norville with his mouth full. After a moment of concern, Velma mentions she's happy for Norville since he'll bother Gigi instead and still use Norville for a ride around town whenever she cracks the whip. However, Gigi has Norville on a leash, so that won't fly anymore because how could I have forgotten his core characteristic? So Velma Velma asks Freddy to go with her. At the Crystal Mines, Daphne wakes up near the center of the mines and is approached by two people in Captain Caveman costumes, because at least someone on the team behind the show acknowledges Hanna-Barbera. These strangers claim to be Daphne's parents, but don't reveal themselves and ask that she look up the Crystal Mine gang. Meanwhile, at the Historical Society, Velma and Freddy arrive looking for information on Dr. Perdue, and the box with all the files is empty, with the exception of one note reading Dia Dinkley, who was the last person to be in the box. And of course, of course, this sparks Velma's hallucinations to kick in, only this time, instead of it ending because of Norville's love being laughed at, we have to deal with Freddy prattling on about the fucking gender pay gap. If you want to be wrong about that, that's your choice, but until I see a bunch of female plumbers knocking on my door and asking if they could snake my drain, I don't want to hear it. Wait, so Freddy fails to help Velma, and she is dead, yes! It's over, finally! Nope, fuck it, we're gone, it's over, done, we're good. Wait. Wait, what do you mean the custodians have defibrillators? God damn it. I survived a meteor for this? My entire kingdom flattened? I think I'd rather go thaw out the devil. So, as it turns out, those are not blessings raining down upon me, and over at Spooners, Velma is jealous of Norville being happy with Gigi, and devises a way to break them up by hosting the band sleepover at her place. At Velma's house, the sleepover is on. You have a security guard confirming students are members with a tune, while inside, Velma explains nothing is to be broken and the house must be clean. This is followed immediately by a knick-knack breaking and a kid eating baking soda, because they're desperate for food? Okay, so Freddy offers to get everyone pizza. Meanwhile, Daphne looks up the Crystal Cave gang, learning they were upwards of 20 members, and they used the massive sewer system for quick escapes. It wasn't until they were caught when a lone red-headed baby was adopted by Daphne's moms, and as it appears, Daphne is that baby. Learning this, she heads for Velma's where Norville is being dropped off, though nearby, because his parents want time alone so that they can get freaky. Daphne can't get in because she's obviously several social levels above everyone, and Velma comes out to see her. When Daphne tries to tell Velma who she's found, Velma interrupts her about where Norville is before heading back in just as Norville walks up and Daphne tells him who she's met. Norville actually listens to Daphne, but Velma brings him inside instead of Daphne. What is happening? This show is the epitome of inconsistency and continuously proves Velma is an unlikable, unfortunately unkillable sociopath. She brushes off the person she supposedly loves in favor of being angry at the black guy because she no longer has him around her pinky finger. 
Really? The fact Mindy has a career at all proves the Antichrist already walks among us. So Velma asks Norville to help, and since most men in today's writings have no spine, he gives in, but asks Velma to make it quick since Gigi has just walked in. How did she walk in? Wasn't that the whole point of the kid out front? Oh, but we were told that she learns how to play the flute. Okay, you try to explain to me in a way that Gigi has a flute on her person in a way that doesn't make me concerned about what's on your hard drive? and I'll give you a dog treat. Anyway, these two argue over Norville, and Gigi apparently off-screen called someone and joined band. Yeah, sure, because you could just do that. So Velma isn't happy Gigi is here, and gets mocked for playing something before correcting her that she is a... You, I'm a flutatist. Rip all those band members that just died a little on the inside. So these two blowhards have a flute off, and it's as painful as you can imagine. <laughs> Of course, Velma loses because she probably wonders what endurance tastes like, and the band members are wondering where the food is, before cutting over to Freddy, demanding the pizza be remade the way Velma likes it. Back at Velma's, she barges into the bathroom and begs Gigi to let Norville help her. Over at Daphne's, she asks her moms about when they found her, and their lying is more obvious than the FTX money laundering scheme. Back at Velma's, Gigi and Velma bicker over Norville, and Gigi hints at something that matters, but doesn't say it? Then Velma tricks tricks Gigi into saying it because, of course, Gigi is just another retard, and it is revealed that Dr. Perdue was Norville's grandmother. Norville isn't happy with either Gigi or Velma and leaves, but bumps into Freddy, who drops the pizza, and then they are smashed. Inside, Norville says the information is new to him, and he's worried about his mom's reputation just as the band members start eating the house. What the hell is happening? I, I, why do I even ask this question? So the group comes up with a plan to get food from Spooners to satisfy the band geeks by using a cop car to get there since the curfew is in effect. Norville volunteers to drive, but they need keys first, and the nearest are at Daphne's. At Daphne's, she gets a call from Velma and is happy to talk to her, but she gets shut down because Velma uses her for her mom's car keys. Driving off, the sewer cap pops out of place somehow, and Daphne finds in the sewer sits Boat. At Spooners, the group grabs a lot of food to feed the band members, and as the sheriff passes by, Velma has a moment of selflessness, choosing to stay behind to distract the sheriff, which I guarantee won't last long. She gets his attention, he rams her, and she gets arrested along with Norville's parents. Hold the fuck up a second, they weren't in the back of the squad car. Also, what the hell were they doing dressed in those costumes? Wait, he's in a cow costume? Oh god, I hope she's not his vet. Either way, Velma takes this opportunity to take a photo, but the principal asks what Velma wants so she doesn't take the photo. Meanwhile, the group gets the food back to the band members at Velma's, and Daphne sneaks out and down into the sewer to go and meet her parents. Are, are we kidding? Am I really supposed to believe these are her folks? Whatever. The next day, Velma is released, gets to go home, and the house is spotless thanks to Norville. Okay, this episode really goes to show just how fucking useless this group is. Scooby-Doo was about a team of high school students that just wanted to help. They didn't do it for fame or wealth, and if they encountered a problem, they just offered to solve it. And I've specified group and team separately and specifically, because in Scooby-Doo, the team works together to solve the mysteries they encounter encounter. Finding clues, rescuing each other, whatever the case may be. In Velma, she's a sociopath, using the race swap character as a whipping boy to drive her around and do things at her bidding rather than request. She offers nothing in return, including the person she supposedly has feelings for. When Daphne has something big to discuss with Velma, she's brushed off in favor of her own self-interests. Norville is without agency, used only to provide exposition, rides around town, or to be the butt of romantic jokes. Well, Freddy has been reduced to a male feminist whose only offering is that he has money. Even Gigi has been a failure in her first proper episode. Norville simps for her now, so she she gets to use him like Velma, and again, she has nothing to offer the group. In fact, the only reason she and Norville are together is because they bump into each other like Chrono and Marl. Daphne is the only one I am holding onto that thin thread of hope for that she might be useful since she has agency, is friendly with others, can take
take care of herself and courageous enough to go into the Crystal Mines on her own, which does make up for the blunder at the end of the previous episode. These past three episodes have been nothing but a fucking waste of time, like reading a CBR article. There has been next to no progress of the story, with women only dying when the plot needs to remind the audience there is something else that we're supposed to care about. I mean, whoop de doo Velma learned to be a little selfless for once. I, like I said, I guarantee that won't last. Aren't you forgetting about Norville's growth? Fuck no, he already does things, like talk about snacks on his blog, so being nice and leaving an IOU for a business he stole from isn't out of character. Halfway through this series so far, and Velma kind of has a moment of self-realization. That's it? This show has been a bigger waste of time than Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign. Even its defenders have to spin reality and try to defend it, and no one is falling for this crap. Good! People should continue to smash this show flatter than hammered shit. It deserves to be mocked profusely for the terrible show and propaganda it is, and maybe we can finally get something good out of Hollywood again. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.